Yes, yes, because I'm talking about both of them, there will be spoilers for both the movie and the comic book it's inspired by. So maybe at least catch the movie before you watch this video if you can. You good? Great. Let's get started. Readers, I think it's safe to say that The Old Guard is one of the most faithful comic book adaptations I've seen from Netflix in a very long time. It respected the source material, it was a good action flick in its own right, and pretty much proved that Love and Basketball director Gina Prince Bythewood has what it takes to be up there with the likes of F. Gary Gray. Now, I didn't necessarily know that this story was originally a comic book written by Greg Rucka that was published by Image Comics when I first saw the trailer for it a while back. And to tell you the truth, because that info wasn't revealed to us in the trailer until like the middle of it, that wasn't what initially sold me. The moment the trailer told me that this movie was pretty much Highlander meets The Expendables, I was already committed. Finding out that it was a comic miniseries that inspired it was just icing on the cake. And I love icing on cakes. Specifically buttercream though, get that whip shit out of my face. So before the movie came out on Netflix, I picked up book one of The Old Guard, Opening Fire, containing the five issues the story of the movie is based on. And I loved it. I'm not gonna lie though. I was a bit concerned that one or both of my boys, Nikki and Joe, were gonna bite it. Considering media's track record of not letting queer male characters be in happy, loving, same-sex relationships by killing off one half in the name of character development. Oh yeah, it happens in comic books too. Look at the new 52's version of Alan Scott's Green Lantern on Earth 2. So when I saw the movie, I was incredibly surprised to see just how accurate it was to opening fire. The story beats were the same, the scene transitions were on par, and the dialogue was pulled straight from the book in most instances. Give or take a few additions and changes for budget and story purposes, this was pretty much one of the most faithful live action adaptations of a graphic novel I've seen in a very long time. So, of course, with so much faithfulness to the source material, the question is asked even more so than dealing with a film that took multiple creative liberties with the comic storyline it's inspired by. And that question is, which one is better? The comic slash graphic novel or its movie adaptation? And if that is in fact why you are here, whether you are a long time reader or stumbled across this video, I must warn you that you're gonna be very disappointed. You see, it's very hard for me to judge which one is better because the Netflix adaptation is so damn faithful to opening fire. Of course, there's not as much gore and spectacle as the comics display, but given a few story beats, you're pretty much watching a proper translation of the five issue trade to a motion picture. And that has a lot to do with Gina Prince Bythewood's direction and her wanting to do right by the key moments in the book and the screenplay being written by the creator of the old guard himself, Greg Ruka. Which, considering the changes that were made to the screenplay compared to how it played out in the five issue miniseries, I was slightly relieved to see that they were made by him and not Netflix executives trying to interfere in the telling of his story. And it's not like the changes in question took away from the overall plot of the story either. Sure, small changes like setting the final battle in London instead of Dubai made sense budget-wise, but that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. Although I will have to admit, getting the little shit cousin from Harry Potter to play the, the piece of shit pharmaceutical villain in the movie was, was a very nice touch. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the creative changes that were made to give the movie a similar yet different feel compared to the book. Things like Niall having a chance to meet the entire team before Joe and Nikki were kidnapped. 
The bonding between Andy and Niall plays out a bit more seriously considering the circumstances, as opposed to how quickly the two were joking and bonding when Niall joined the team in the comic. Andy's romance with Achilles was still referenced in the form of the painting in the mine like an opening fire, but instead of that being the flashback we got of her learning to cope with not getting attached to anybody, he's replaced with another immortal named Quinn that we're never even introduced to in volume one, and even having Niall dream her in order to get that exposition out of the team in the first place. And then of course, there's the decision to have Andy start losing her immortality halfway through the movie, while Andy and the graphic novel kept it throughout. I personally would have had a problem with some of these changes that the movie made in comparison to how things played out in the comic book if Greg Ruka didn't write the screenplay. And that's because it tells me that upon writing this adaptation of his series for Netflix feature film, he put in place some ideas he had for his second Old Guard story, Force Multiplied, in order for the eventual sequel to this movie to streamline better. And anyone who's read the five issues that make up of Force Multiplied would probably have a better idea than I would and how that would have made sense, narratively speaking. I say that because, unfortunately, I read comics by volume and trade now, not by issue. At the time of the recording of this video, Volume 1 of The Old Guard collecting issues 1 through 5 of Opening Fire, the story the movie was based on, was all that was available in trade paperback. And I didn't want to get the single issues of Force Multiplied just to keep up, knowing I couldn't properly store and take care of it if it were in a trade. So until The Old Guard Book 2 Force Multiplied is released in September of 2020, I can't verify if any of the extra additions regarding Andy losing her immortality, Copley becoming their oracle figure, or the return of Quinn during the mid credit scene were either taken from the next five issues of the series or were exclusive to the film adaptation. Although according to the synopsis of book two, it's a good guess that the latter revelation in the movie is definitely an element that's going to be the focus of the graphic novel the movie sequel will eventually be based on. But despite me not having that much knowledge about the future of the comic series in order to pinpoint the accuracy of the film series adapted from it, I still find it extremely hard for me to say that the comic is better than the movie or even vice versa because they're both just really good experiences in themselves. With the Old Guard Book 1 opening fire, I enjoyed the genuineness of all of the characters that were introduced. I laughed at Andy constantly struggling with how to use her phone because she's too old to keep up with technology. I loved the sisterhood she and Niall formed once they got their search for Nikki and Joe off the ground. I felt empathy for Book when he explained why he betrayed the team after their first failed attempt to rescue Nikki and Joe. And <laughs> I just love Nikki and Joe. But at the same time, the movie offers things that I would have liked to have seen from Opening Fire. Despite me laughing at the concept of immortals that can't keep up with the world as it evolves, it was nice to see Andy and the like in the movie not being treated like incompetent baby boomers when dealing with trivial technological tasks. While I did like seeing the way Niall and Andy bonded over the course of the comic, watching Niall feel firsthand that isolation upon seeing how her fellow Marines looked at her upon her first resurrection, while seeing the way she tried and failed to cope with the fact that she was immortal, with the added heat of Andy trying to get her to see a sense of reason as to how quickly she adapted to the life in the comics, brings a whole new dynamic and, despite the hook of the series, adds a sense of realness to it that the comic wouldn't really be able to emulate. And I just fucking love Nikki and Joe. <laughs> it is absolutely unfair to try and say that one is better than the other when both of them complement each other so well. 
I'll have the links in the description below if you want to pick up a copy of the old Garb Volume 1 and either pre-order or pick up a copy of Volume 2 in the description below, depending on when you watch this video. I implore you to at least read Opening Fire after watching the movie so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's very rare that I see a film adaptation of a graphic novel do the story so much justice while adding new elements to it in order for it to stand out on its own to the point where the movie is just as much required watching as the source material is required reading. And I'm personally glad such a feat happened with the old guard because it means if they can do it, then these other studios really don't have any other excuse. But <laughs> I digress readers, your homework assignment for the day. If you've seen The Old Guard, write in the comments section below what you thought about it. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, if you know of any other live action comic book adaptations that are as faithful to the source material and original storyline as The Old Guard. Whichever question you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Rita's 101. Class dismissed.